As censored gaming has spoken about in the past, DMCA strikes are used by copyright holders to protect their intellectual property, but sometimes they're also used for censorship. Many websites, such as YouTube, automate their DMCA strike system, and not always with great results. In the past, copyright holders have used this lack of oversight from YouTube to remove material and reviews that have cast their product in a negative light. Claim content is often taken down immediately, and getting the strike removed can be a long, complicated process. However, abusing the system doesn't always go smoothly for copyright holders. When exposed to the public, their abuse of the DMCA has often caused outrage, hurting them far more than a negative review would. So with that in mind, let's take a look at five times DMCA notices have been used to silence criticism. Number one, day one, Gary's incident. Back in October 2013, YouTuber Total Biscuit released a 20 minute first impression video of day one, Gary's incident by developer Wild Game Studio. Total Biscuit was very critical of the game, finding the frame rate, quest mechanics, level design, and overall gameplay subpar. Their review must have made an impression because soon after it was hit with a DMCA notice. Suffice to say, striking a review by a popular YouTube channel did not go over fairly well. As outrage and support for Total Biscuit erupted on the game's Steam community forum, the CEO of Wild Game Studio, Stefan Woods, issued this statement on Steam. We protected our copyright because Total Biscuit has no right to make advertising revenues with our license. But Stefan's words didn't end anything. Total Biscuit responded with another video where he accused Woods of lying and pointed out that he had received a Steam code from Woods himself. He further accused the company of not being interested in consumer protection. Perhaps unable to deal with the fallout, Wild Game Studio relented. By the end of October, they had issued a public apology, removed their DMCA strike, and the video was restored to YouTube. Gary's incident faced other accusations, but for now, let's move on to number two, Slaughtering Ground. In November 2014, content creator Jim Sterling released a first impression video of Slaughtering Ground by developer Digital Homicide. The video's title describes the game as a contender for worst game of 2014, and Jim questioned several of the game's design choices, such as targeting alignment, ammo distribution, and enemy design. He also mocked the fact that the game was incomplete and up for sale. The review prompted a response by Digital Homicide, who themselves posted a video on YouTube mocking Jim. Sterling continued to release videos mocking the game and the pushback from the developer. Seemingly in response to his criticism though, Digital Homicide then filed a DMCA strike on Sterling's playthrough and company co-founder James Romain sued Sterling for assault, libel, and slander. Romine later filed suit against Steam users for personal injury and subpoenaed Valve, the owners of Steam, for the users' identities. Valve did not take this sitting down and removed Digital Homicide's entire catalog from their service. Unsurprisingly, the case against the Steam users was eventually dropped. Court documents claim the plaintiff's business was destroyed completely. This left Romine unable to continue the lawsuit. However, Ramin's case against Sterling persisted until February of 2017, when it was dismissed without prejudice. Jim released a statement on his website, The Jimquisition, stating his belief that the resolution was a result of his lawyer's enviable reasoning ability, convincing Ramin of the result of going to court. But, Digital Homicide was not the only developer to duel with Sterling in 2014, which brings us to number 3, Island Light. When Russian developer Cobra Studios released a trailer for its game, Island Light, the reaction was not universally positive. Sterling mocked it, saying it was similar to RSPCA commercials, but for zombies. Cobra filed copyright strikes against several YouTubers, including Sterling, Harmful Gaming, and Attack Slug. Attack Slug's case is especially shocking, as he posted no footage of the game. His video was just himself talking about the controversy. In most of these cases, copyright holders claim used footage from games as being the reason for the strike. Following the usual pattern, Steam and Twitter started venting at the studio over censorship. Many of the creators took to Twitter to voice their concerns, mocking the developers. Sterling wrote, How could a game as derivative as Island Light have the nerve to copyright strike anybody? They owe every other zombie game ever royalties. Furthermore, he filed a counter-strike to put the video back up and it is now back on YouTube. Things also got really interesting on Steam. You see comments were deleted, and at least one user alleged that Cobra had plagiarized the Island Light logo from a work on DeviantArt. 
one Steam user accused him of hypocrisy for striking down reviews while ripping off art. It's not clear whether it was Steam's decision or Cobra's or what the reason was, but within four days of the DMCA strikes, Island Light was also removed from Steam Greenlight. We see the use of DMCA strikes for intimidation in number four, World of Tanks. In March of 2017, World of Tanks community contributor Sir Foch posted a rant about an update on the game on YouTube. The rant covered the design of a new tank and what he saw as the increasing pay-to-win aspects of the game. Responding to the rant, a community manager contacted him on Discord, telling him he was removed from the contributor program and threatening to file a DMCA strike if he did not remove the video. Writing, I don't really have a choice here, Sir Foch removed the offending video. However, Sir Foch released screenshots of the conversation, which infuriated members of the World of Tanks community and moved on to the mainstream sites. At first, community management denied filing any strike or trying to censor anyone. In this quote to Kotaku, they tried to explain their position. We regret having to go to such extreme measures in Sir Foch's case, but we also don't consider those measures to be censorship because we weren't trying to silence Sir Foch's opinion. We were simply seeking to curb the extremely profane language of a member of our contributor program. But eventually, management took back their actions, stating, We acted too quickly when we threatened to have YouTube remove Sir Foch's video through a copyright infringement complaint. We have apologized to Sir Foch for making that threat, and we are continuing our conversation with him on next steps. Last up is an odd case of a fan game developer filing a DMCA. In number 5, Firefly Online. Back in 2013, developer Dark Cryo was involved in an attempt to make an online fan game based on the TV series Firefly. The original product was shut down, but attempts were made to revive it. Enter the blog site Furious Nads, run by Christopher Frankinus. The site is no longer operating, but it can still be looked at by archives like archive.org. In a series of articles, Christopher described his ongoing feud with the developers and accused them of a number of ethical and legal violations including misrepresenting their relationship with Fox Entertainment, as well as violating terms of service and U.S. securities law. On the developer's revenue sharing program, he explains that Dark Cryo was, to quote, soliciting funds of a promise of a possible return on the investment via a revenue sharing scheme that at the very least should be considered a violation of Indiegogo's terms of service, and at the most, potentially could run afoul of laws governing the sale of private stock depending on how the laws of the United States and Canada, where Dark Cryo is located, consider and define an investment via in-game currency intended by design to be easily converted into real-world cash. About a month after this article, Dark Cryo filed a DMCA notice against Furious Nads for using their logo in articles. Christopher received a letter from his host stating, as you are probably aware, web hosts do not have much leeway in responding to complaints like this. We do not get the judge fair use or anything of that sort. We are required to remove anything someone submits a claim about, until which time as you submit a counter complaint. Humorously, rather than file a counter strike, Furious Nads replaced the logo with this. Like all other censorship related matters, abuse of DMCA to silence criticism is something that censored gaming is always keeping a close eye on. With how easy it is for DMCA takedowns to be made and the lack of penalties for those abusing the system, these types of stories are, unfortunately, alarmingly common. If you would like to see more features based around DMCA abuse, please make sure to leave a comment below and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thanks for watching.